Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter and I'm back with another Barbie video. It's been almost a year since my last Barbie video, but I have an update. So I collect typewriters, obviously, but one of the subsects of typewriters that I've got really interested in is the Barbie electronic typewriters from the late 90s and early 2000s. And one of the reasons I got really into these machines is because they have such a fascinating history to me. Some of these models have a coding and decoding function in them, which children could use to code and decode messages across machines so you could send something in code to your friend and they could decode it on their Barbie typewriter and I always thought that was interesting but what I thought was even more fascinating was that Barbie didn't advertise this very well when they were releasing these models they kind of hid it and didn't put it in the instruction manual and it resulted in a lot of these machines just getting tossed because people would accidentally turn on the coding or decoding function and their machine would be typing in gibberish and they wouldn't understand why so a lot of these machines didn't survive the early two thousands and it always made me curious about these typewriters. And so I started the long process of doing more investigation into these typewriters and collecting these typewriters and getting them shipped from England and it's resulted in me having about three Barbie typewriters in my collection. Two electronic ones, the E117 model and one manual Barbie typewriter. And at the end of last year, I got the fourth one to add to my collection. This is the Barbie Electronic E115 model, which is a little bit earlier than the two electronics I've had in my collection. So because I've always been talking about these Barbie machines on the internet and I have quite a few videos, I get asked questions about Barbie typewriters all the time. Anytime somebody finds a Barbie typewriter, they like to tag me. If they have questions about the ribbon replacements, they send me an email. And I received an email in the middle of last year from somebody from the UK who has a YouTube channel. His name is James and he runs the YouTube channel Singing Banana, which makes math videos and algorithm videos and stats. And there's a, there's a lot of math involved and I'm not a math person, but he emailed me because he wanted to make a video on cryptology, but had a Barbie typewriter that didn't have a coding and decoding function. He had run into this same concept a few years ago, bought a Barbie typewriter, couldn't figure out how to get the coding and decoding to work and asked if I wanted to collab on a video on his channel featuring my Barbie typewriters that do have this coding and decoding function. So I said, yes, this is my current setup. <laughs> I'm in my bedroom cause I'm moving. On top of a typewriter stand, on top of a typewriter case, is my laptop with the zoom ID. Above that is the camera. Uh, it's kind of a mess in here. So my special guest is Sarah Everett, who has her own YouTube channel all about typewriters. It's called Just My Typewriter. Great pun. And Sarah actually has her own story about her quest to find these Barbie typewriters. So let's welcome Sarah to the video. Hi, Sarah. Hello! <laughs> Hi! We did it! We've made it! After doing that video with James over on his channel Singing Banana, and I've linked that down below, he actually offered to send me his E115 model because he didn't have a use for it. And I said yes. So this beautiful Barbie typewriter was shipped to me and I left it in a box for a while. After I got it out of the box, the first thing I wanted to do was test it to see if I could get that coding and decoding function to work. James had mentioned that he hadn't found it on this typewriter and was confused as to why it wasn't there. So the Barbie typewriters and Barbie electronic typewriters actually come from one of the companies they license their designs from. Maheno is a Slovenian toy manufacturer. And so they had originally come up with these typewriters that had this coding and decoding function on them. And Barbie had licensed that design to make their pink and purple versions. And the Maheno typewriters, including the Maheno E115 models, the same as this one, do have that coding and decoding function. But when I tried this machine, I also couldn't figure out how to put that coding and decoding function on the machine. I tried all the typical tips and tricks that I had used on my other Barbie electronic models. I had tried the coding and decoding functions. I'd done a little bit of research and I couldn't figure out why this typewriter wouldn't code. And I also ran into a problem of having some of the letters get stuck and repeat over and over and over again. And I didn't want to break this cause it's, it's too pretty to be broken. <laughs> So 
So the next logical thing I could think of was I wanted to open up the typewriter, not only to repair and clean around the keys that might be getting stuck, so I don't have that getting stuck problem while writing, but also to check out the computer board inside of these Barbie electronic typewriters. So I cleaned the keyboard and fixed that stuck key on it, and then I turned my attention to the actual storage and computer board and the things that look technical and like they could electrocute me inside the board. Now, I don't really know anything about computers or computer chips or any of this stuff really, but I did know that I had a subscriber and a follower who had done some videos on video games and coding and computers before, so I decided to send him a message. So I'm gonna link down below Jason's YouTube channel because he makes a lot of cool videos and I knew he was the right guy to ask this question. I took some photos of the computer chip and board inside this E115 model and I also took some photos of the inside computer chip board in my E117 model because I know that one has the coding and decoding function. And here's what Jason said. The darker colored board, which is the E117 model, must be from, more, from a more sophisticated typewriter. So the lighter colored board has a 4-bit microcontroller. That's this E115 model. In this case, 4-bit means it can only possibly address a very small memory. So it can't run complex programs. Maybe something along the lines of 2K of program space. Can't remember the math at the moment. Smiley face. Don't worry, Jason, I wouldn't have known if you were wrong. <laughs> the darker colored board, which is the one from the E117 model, looks to have at least a 32-bit microcontroller on it, capable of addressing four gigabytes of program space and RAM. That's huge for that application. To me, this says only the darker colored board would be capable of supporting a highly sophisticated feature. The lighter board, only simple programs. So translating from context clues, because I don't really understand tech talk, my understanding is that the E117 model has a much bigger computer board and storage space on it, so it can store something like an alpha substitution program, where the board here on this 115 model is much smaller in its storage space. So it can still do things like bold and underline, but it doesn't have enough storage space to run a program like an alpha substitution program that would result in coding and decoding, which from a mechanical perspective absolutely makes sense and definitely explains why something like this E115 model wouldn't have coding and decoding on it, but my 117 machines do. However, However, it still kind of confused me as to why the Mahano machines, which are the original versions, do have coding and decoding on them, but this licensed version, which really just looks like it's a different color, wouldn't have that same function on it. And so I did the only logical thing I could think of and I tried to call Barbie. Let's try calling HQ, shall we? Thank you for calling Mattel. We are currently closed. Our business hours are Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. I don't think they want to help me. <laughs> and Barbie didn't want to take my call, so I started to spam their Instagram with the same question over and over again, talking about the different Barbie electronic typewriters and asking if they had any advertising that might explain why the E115 model doesn't have the coding and decoding function on it. And they kept sending me auto responses. They really didn't want to talk to me. Eventually, I did get a response that was outside of their auto reply, and here's what they had to say. Sorry, we don't have this information available due to their age, and they were most likely manufactured by one of our licensees, which starts to point me in a direction. I don't know what direction, but it's going somewhere. After my failed chat with Barbie and I couldn't get much information out of her, I decided to go direct to the source and ask Mahano why the Barbie version doesn't have coding and decoding or has a different computer chip inside of it than the Mahano version does. So I contacted them and they actually got back to me. So one of their reps actually sent me this email. Since the product is longer discontinued, we don't have any reliable information about your question. It could be that some models were made in Slovenia and others in China. Now this makes a lot of sense to me. Barbie might have been licensing the design from Mahano, the Slovenian company, which was manufacturing their keyboards and their typewriters in Slovenia, but Barbie might have had that manufactured in another country like China. And if they were trying to reduce costs, they might have put a smaller storage space board in the typewriter itself, which might explain why you'd have different computer components inside two variations of the same model, the Mahano E115 and the Barbie E115. And I think this kind of cleared up a lot 
lot of my questions regarding the variant differences between these models. The E115, which is in the Barbie version, was kind of like the light mode version of the original Mahano design, which did advertise heavily that interesting feature of coding and decoding. And when Barbie decided to make their models, they didn't include the feature, and that's why it wasn't in their instruction manuals, because they were trying to reduce cost and have a smaller sized computer board inside their E115 model. And I thought that would be the end of the conversation with Mahano, but I got another email. Dear Mrs. Everett, which is my mom, <laughs> Since you're passionate about typewriters, I found some of our items in our old catalog. I scanned the pages for you, hope it helps. I was so excited to get any kind of materials on these machines. I haven't been able to find any advertising on the Barbie typewriters. I've been sent a couple old catalogs before that feature the E118 model. I was able to get some of those from my friend Emma over at Lychee Pink Planner. She'd emailed Mahano before and they had sent her some catalogs regarding their E118 model. It's the newest version of the Barbie typewriter typewriter, which I don't have, but I'd never really seen any of their manuals or advertising featuring the E115 model, which is what I was interested in specifically. So if you look at some of these catalogs, they show you all the different models that Mahano was making. There are tons of them in here. And eventually when you scroll down far enough, you run into the two Barbie versions they have in this catalog. One of these is a manual Barbie typewriter, which is a little bit of a different design from the one that I have. I have a much more rounded shape one. And then they have the E115 model and it's labeled as E115B. And I was wondering why that might be different from the model that I have, which doesn't have an A or B on it, but the designs across the one in their catalog is a little bit different than the design across the front of my E115 model. Like I have fewer stickers, but more stars, which I don't mind. And as I was looking at the back of my E115 model, I noticed it says E115 slash E116. And I really wasn't sure what that meant. If you look at the Cryptology Museum's website, which is where this whole Barbie thing started for me, they talk about the different model variants, and they do mention that they don't think that there's an E116 model version in the Barbie body style. They have a version from the Hano in there, but nothing from Barbie, and I think it could be that all of the E115 models were kind of this amalgamation of an E115 A or B, which might have different designs across the top, slash E116, which means they're kind of a hybrid between the E115 models and the E116. 16 models from Mahano, but that's just speculation. If you look at the functions that are different between this E115 model and the E117 model, obviously the coding and decoding functions here are different, and that is due to the storage space on the computer boards inside of these, but there are a couple other things that are different on the E115 model itself, and one of those is the fact that this comes with both the adapter that you can plug in this typewriter, but it also has the battery pack in it. Now I had mentioned this in my original Barbie video, the instruction manual for the E117 mentions a battery pack, but it doesn't have a battery pack anywhere in it. The E115 model does have a battery pack, and it's also where they're hiding one of their screws to get the bottom off of this machine. <laughs> so I think that's interesting, that you could either run this on batteries or plug it into the wall. And maybe again, that's why they have to have a smaller storage space on the computer board inside of it, because it had to be battery operated. You couldn't be running as high tech of a process on like four AA batteries. One of the other problems I've run into with these Barbie machines and my Barbie obsession is that because they aren't making these anymore, they're also not making the ribbon replacements anymore. And when you run out of ink on these, it's kind of hard to figure out how to fix it. I've had some luck before with finding old ribbon cartridges for Mahano machines, taking out the Mahano machine insides and putting them in the Barbie cartridges so that they would fit these models because the Barbie cartridges are just slightly different than the Mahano cartridges. But I didn't have as much luck this time finding a cartridge that would fit this E115 model. I did have some luck asking Lucas of Typewriter Chicago to help me figure out a ribbon solution for my 117 model. He had inked up a really tiny little ribbon to fit in the cartridge, but I wanted to find something a little bit more sustainable than asking Lucas to help me every time when I was looking for a ribbon replacement for this E115 model. And Typewriter Chicago came to the rescue again because he actually sent me to the Swintech ribbon replacement website. And they have all of these cartridges that work on the Swintech machines. 
and the material inside of these ribbon replacements is actually the same kind of material that is in these Barbie machines. It's more of a cellophane material than it is like an actual ribbon that you would have on a typewriter. And so he suggested one of the Swintech ones that I could purchase that had a little bit of a thinner ribbon because the size of ribbon in this is one color and it's pretty thin, almost like a shoestring. I purchased one of those and I decided to try to take the insides out of the Swintech version and put it inside the cartridge for the Barbie machine. And I ran into a couple problems here. Number one being that the cartridge for this Barbie machine is pretty small. So all of the ribbon shoved into the Swintech model wasn't gonna fit inside of this Barbie machine. I was able to chop it down a little bit, down to size, and try to stick it in the cartridge, but eventually I had to remove it because it was just too tall for the cartridge itself. So it was close, but no cigar. So I did eventually just put back in the original ribbon that was in this cassette and put it back in the machine. So I'm still looking for some ribbon replacement options that will help us sustain the life of the Barbie electronic typewriters, because I know everybody wants one. Actually, it's just me that wants more. So that is the story of the fourth Barbie electronic typewriter. I got it from a guy in England who was making videos about math. I emailed people in Slovenia and eventually tried replacing the ribbon and failed. <laughs> I love these machines. I think they're so kooky and crazy and they're not good typewriters. They're not good to type on, even as a toy for children. They are not designed well. <laughs> I totally understand that, but I think it's kind of like this Interesting little area in typewriters. I like things that don't have a ton of information on them because I can go dig. And any typewriter models that I've run into, like my console, for example, that has like zero information about it out there on the internet. I like trying to find ways to get information about that model or learn more about that machine. And every time I do one of these Barbie videos, I feel like I learn more about both the manufacturing process that they went through to make them and also just more about these machines in general. So I got to learn a lot more by investing investigating this fourth Barbie typewriter in my collection. It might not type great, but I think it's really cool to look at and it is cool to learn a little bit more of the mystery behind these machines and how they were manufactured. And I think the fact that my fridge is turned on is indicated it might be the end of the video. It's not exactly a science. I don't have all the answers, but every time I do one of these videos, I meet new people, people like Jason and James and Emma and Justin who sent me my manual typewriter. I'm always learning something new. I'm always meeting new people. And it's kind of my cool little corner on the internet where I feel like I'm the person who for some reason people trust with information about Barbie typewriters, even though I'm pretty clueless. So that is my fourth Barbie typewriter. I'm still looking for the E118 model. That's like the newest version of the Barbie electronic typewriter, but I do have all the other E Barbie variants of the electronic models and a manual version as well. Someday I will find one at a garage sale and the journey will be complete. If you're interested in some of the other Barbie videos I've done, I will link those down below, but I also have some other typewriter content here on this YouTube channel, as well as on Instagram at just.my.typewriter. I want to thank you all so much for watching and remind you, you're just my type writer. I just released my nail polish video and someone commented that I should try to match my nails to my typewriter in all my videos. So I did do it for this one. So there you go to that random commenter. <laughs>